So I said it before and I'll say it again. I guarantee this will be the most bizarre story that you will hear see today or maybe all year long. Now, we've been covering the rise of of transhumanism, which is just an extension of the eugenics program uh, that never went away in the early part of last century. Sterilization, castration, the, mutila the, mutila the, mutila the mutilation of bodies, it's hard to say, both physical and then, of course, through pharmaceuticals now, like this is the big push. Like we don't have to do it necessarily through surgeries, although we're continuing to do that, but pharmaceuticals yeah. and the pharmaceutical, biopharmaceutical complex is making billions of dollars off of uh, hormone blockers, pure Puberty blocking blockers and all sorts of oh birth control birth control contraception exactly. uh -huh. yes so you're seeing governments and of course now you're seeing governments putting policies in place to support this madness on top of it part of this transhumanism movement has to do with people who turn themselves into pets well, or or act like pets or dogs and cats. Well, I've read the first dog, three Dogman comics, so I know how that happens. It's it's an accident, right? He goes between in. the the dog and and his sergeant, and they're dying, and the doctor has to stitch them together. That's oh, like why Frankenstein. Happens. Yeah, it's, no, it it's is not like that. It's not like that at all. It's your choice. If you have been feeling like, you know, I just I've always wanted to be be like a dog. Now you can do this. Part of the transhumanism movement includes people turning themselves into dogs. OK, so here's an example. Here's a guy from England. He became a Dalmatian. Uh, he sleeps and lives in a Dalmatian costume for five thousand um, dollars. He plays fetch. He sleeps in a kennel. Uh, he does. And as I guess his wife or partner, or whatever, looks really thrilled about it. Yes. Um, puts him in a kennel to sleep. He, I have so he, many questions. Oh yeah. The fact that he loves eating dog food, he finds eating dog food amazing. And this is like his dream. Like moist and meaty. I mean, if you look at the suit, I, I, the one question I have, if you just look at that suit, does he go out in the yard and pee? Like, like that looks like one, a onesie. So... I have so many questions. And I like he's got the harness to take him on a walk. Yeah, like, no, she to... walks him. Like, she puts a leash on and walks him around the neighborhood. Like, if she has poop bags, I'm going to, I'm leaving. <laughs> 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 it's the poop bags Neighbors that send like, you oh over the gosh, edge. It's, it's not the Larry's outfit. It's not the harness. Again. Yeah. Like, can you, the can you not? Neighbors have got signs in their yard. Larry, do not poop in our yard. <laughs> yeah. Instead of dogs, don't poop in our yard. Please, like, please don't have your husband poop in our yard anymore. All right. Uh, recently, and then that's just one of the example. Recently, the U.S. military found out that it had dog uh, mask wearing officers. So the U.S. military has a lot of these people who are, who are into pup play. Uh, as they call it, this colonel posted a photo of himself with another junior officer dressed as dogs. So the U.S. military is now investigating, and there's apparently a no number of these. This is this now is what this happens. This really set off a lot of members of the military. The guy who is the guy, um, the fighter pilot that we've had on the show, who is fighting vaccine mandates. Yeah. Um, um, yes. The guy who looks like the Top Gun. Yes. Character. Anyway, um, he, I saw him uh, posting about it quite a bit and how, you know, you are not supposed to defile a uniform. But John this, Bose. Yeah, they, John thank Bose, you. Yeah. Yes. Um, and out. that a lot of people who wear this uniform find this really unacceptable. Yeah. So you're wearing a colonel's uniform like he's a colonel with a with a pup mask like and this is what I wear. And then, of course, journalists uncovered and figured out who the guy was. It's uh, here he is. Colonel Brian Connolly. There he is without his uh, dog mask on. Now, do um, you think I thought I thought this was the sex thing? Not it is. A, he, you know, was so uh, don't together explain with, it. Don't don't explain it. He was with. I just these mentioned are fetishes, he was, basically. these are fetishes. He was with a junior officer and they they like to dress up as dogs as pup play. This is what they do. I mean, do you see do you feel do you guys feel safer in America knowing these pups are out there protecting our border? Um, here's what I really I mean, want. I feel like our territory is well marked. That's a good one. This, that was a really the jokes good one. keep writing themselves. Yeah. So uh, here's what I really wanted to show you today, though. So here's this new sort of breaking news story. No, stop it. This oh, is no. real. This is no, one no, man. No, 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 no. This is one man in Japan. He decided to take things to the next level. He spent over $15,000 to turn himself <laughs> into a border collie. Uh, this is a man who goes by the name of Toko. He has a YouTube channel. I kid you not. And 
is where he and he never reveals his face. You, he only wears his dog costumes. Recently, he bought a costume that cost forty. Uh, t- cost uh, took over forty hours to make, and is fifteen thousand dollars to turn himself fully into a dog body. Um, in his YouTube channel, he goes on walks as a dog. He rolls around as a dog. He sleeps as a dog. He even eats. I mean, dog look at food. the way he's walking. It, a human is look. not supposed to walk like that. It looks like yeah. my dad's dog had hip dysplasia. Right. That's sort of what that well, looks I was say, like. Like that's that not looks right. Like it needs to be put down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's put him out of his misery. <laughs> that's not how yeah. humans are. Supposed but he's like, to oh, this is. I'm going to lay down here. This is my afternoon nap here. I'm going to just lay down. Like, I mean. The human inside there is going to need a chiropractor bad. This is crazy town. So, you know, Dr. Phil, uh, not too long ago, had on a dog man um, to try to get un- into the, like, the psychosis, try to understand, like, what goes on inside the brain of someone who's this, you know, part of this transhumanism, turning himself into a pet. Um, and here's a guy that wears, like, a paper dog costume, and he goes out in the neighbor. He goes to, like, dog parks to be with other dogs because he thinks he's a dog. This is what he wants to be. Watch. You just put on a paper dog suit and walk around town, which doesn't seem to me to be a highly productive course in life. (laughs) Well, I feel it makes me more social because it's something that I engage in with people, wearing the costume outwardly, going around the city, and I kind of can get friends that way too. You know, people who interact with me as a dog. And owners, Friends. mostly dog owners, really like the situation, you know, of me being a dog on the, you know, outside and yeah. stuff. How many of them have asked you to come home for dinner? <laughs> People do say, they have a thing, can I take you home? Okay. So, mm-hmm. you know, Grim earlier, uh, who's on our team, said, this is crazy, this is crazy. But I, I just wait until they start having like species affirming surgery and governments start saying, hey, this is fine. We've already been covering here on the show how, uh, you know, government <laughs> offices are allowing like people to like set up dog bowls, certain schools for, for, for people who identify as an animal can have. Yes. I mean, uh, th- uh, like those species are- affirming care. Yeah. Species yes. affirming care. Those stories have supposedly been debunked and then rebunked so i'm not clear on that for children whether or not they're actually allowing children to uh, that seems incredibly unsanitary like we're going to make them wear masks over their face but poop in a litter box well i've seen you know other instances of children in my research who were uh, they get together as werewolves these are 15 14 13 year olds who get together as cliques of werewolves mm-hmm. and they wear tails and they become a part of a clique of werewolves in schools and yeah, this, I'm cool with that. They go out at midnight uh, on on full moons, and they get together wearing their I wearing mean, their tails. And like when I was a kid, you know, we watched The Howling and and uh, what was that uh, uh, Werewolf in London? You know, so it was kind of cool to like pretend you were a werewolf and stuff like that. But like you're pretending for a little while. You're not actually going out and getting your. And that's the, I, I believe that's the danger with all this stuff. Is like we have this this like TikTok and social media. Now you see one person doing it like we did as kids and having fun, but then all these kids see it's cool. And then it's like, they start getting all this attention. It's like, Oh, I just, now I want to be that. And then it's like, Oh, they're getting all this attention by being that I want to be that too. And it's like, these trends keep emerging. And it's like, we're, we're, we're leaving the realm of, of play and make believe and m- moving into like, making this a reality and that's like that's a very scary reality yes but as helen joyce points out in her excellent book trans when she actually went through the the history of transgender surgeries they did it did start as a fetish of a a Mm. man who wanted to dress and present as a woman and marry another man um in the uk i believe and there was a doctor who was willing to experiment on him and he died a horrible death of infection and all kinds of bad things happening when they just basically inverted his penis so when people do normalize these types of fetishes fetishes how do you what is the plural of fetish 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 fetishes, fetishes, fetishes. fetishes. Uh, then you know they're they usually can find someone who's willing to experiment on them and their bodies um, in an affirming way. If if you look at how it's been embraced, right? It's been becoming more and more mainstream because like you have these fetishes, they're embraced, nobody really pushes back. And I think like for me, 
I feel like kids just want to be accepted for who they are, right? But like they don't find that acceptance for who they are when they don't fit into these certain categories. So they go online and they see other people being accepted by a bunch of people for who they are. So it's like it's if because a lot of people just let this go and now it's now it's becoming a mainstream thing. And and you're right, like it's it started with gender. Now it's working its way into species. And then it's like there's people that think they're aliens and have their bodies like completely changed to look alien like. So it's like we're opening a door that when is it going to close? Like how op- far open is this door going to go if we don't stop encouraging people to do this kind of thing and and start accepting people for who they are, whether they're you know what I mean, like not not the fetish side of it, but like as far as kids, because kids aren't doing it because they have a fetish, they're doing it because it's trendy. In most cases, if you look at the the majority of them, I mean, there's there's groups of kids now doing it. It's not. It's like you've got a group of people that together are changing their gender. The reason I did this story, the reason we did this story, is because it's already happening. These surgeries are already happening. So what Natalie's talking about is it starts out as a fetish. It starts out as like a fun thing, and you know, someone's trying to do it experimentally. Now these surgeries are happening. And they're happening more regularly. People turning their faces into cat faces. People turning their faces into dog faces. Yeah. Um, this is happening. So here's it. Here's you know, a question. A guy turning his face into a drag. He turned himself into a dragon. So now he's a dragon. Um, yeah. But Do you have to register as an animagus? You can't no, have because a you, you joke. Uh, because you can't turn back. Like you're now you're permanently scarred know. as a. Oh right, then you're not really an animal. Are there tax advantages to any of this? Because I'm like over here thinking. I wonder if I like if you're actually an animal. Animals uh, don't dogs work don't or pay, pay taxes, taxes, right? Yeah, dogs. Yeah. yeah, so that's a great point. Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. If there's a tax advantage of becoming a dog, then maybe you got, that's you something can't get I would drafted. Consider. Right. Yeah. I don't have a social security number. I'm a dog. That's right. I exactly. don't have to pay property taxes. I just Tell live me with I'm this. Not. I just live with this guy. It's <laughs> crap me on I'm this not. guy's yard. <laughs> yeah, tell me I'm not a dog and I'm getting bite you for microaggression. Right. <laughs> All right, we're done here, folks. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for joining us on Redacted, our first show back. That was rough. Oh. Get it? <laughs> Throw this guy a bone. Thank you so much for watching this segment here at Redacted. We are live every day at 4 p.m. Eastern time trying to share the stories that the mainstream media will not cover. You should also come over and join our community of Redacted Rebels over at redacted.inc. That's our private locals community where we can share exclusive content that we simply cannot share here on YouTube. Come over and join the rebellion together right now by going to redacted.inc. We'll see you next time.